Hey, we're already five points up on last season, so things can't be too bad. It's time to start harping on rugby. My name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to Harping on Rugby, where at the help of some fellow fans, I get the chance to harp on what's going on with Leinster, Ireland, and the wider rugby world. First up, joining me for this first rap pot of the season is someone earning cap number 59. Welcome back to Mr. Leinster Royalty himself, Tom Coleman. Evening, foe. Evening, Jeff. Good to be back. New season. Indeed, indeed. Good to have you, Tom. And uh, our second guest is making pod appearance number 22, which when added to as many articles on our old website, brings him to 186 harp and contributions overall. He has his own excellent podcast called Post to Post Sport. Welcome back to Mr. Kieran Duffy. Yeah, 186, including a few cameo appearances on the pod. Uh, we're more of a blog, Post to Post Sport, than a podcast these days. We kind of keep changing our identity, but uh, good to be back on the, the big show, the big time. Yeah, online content is is what it is in, in many in many different forms. But yeah, check out post to post forward. We have the links in the program notes. Okay, let's crack on with our feature match of the week, which was of course Edinburgh v Leinster in round one of the 24-25 United Rugby Championship. It was played in Hive Stadium on Friday evening, and another Harpen contributor, David Cordial, who traveled over to the match, described the conditions as, at kick of time as not raining, but the air is wet, which probably covers about 99% of Scottish weather forecasts. The first breakdown of the 24-25 season was literally one of communications, as the kickoff was briefly delayed for repairs to the official's earpiece technology but eventually it was edinburgh out half ross thompson getting the match underway tom yeah and as uh just saying before the po- just pod started it's great to get rugby back and it was nice to have a, a game on a friday evening uh as david said over there before the before the match kicked off it did seem to be raining but uh it, it looked to be pretty heavy uh on the tv by the time the game started uh it was the first really reminder of what it's going to be like to come back to, to the fence down and uh for the rest of the season with the rain but um, yeah, look, it was a good start. Um, I think, you know, just touching over some of the main points of the first half, I thought the first thing to mention is just how important and how great it was to have Gibson Park back because you not take that first 10 minute block, even though we didn't score just before Edinburgh scored their first try. Um, you could just see the value of, of Gibson Park and what he brings to Leinster, just that tempo and going from rock to rock and right to left. And he really gave us a good platform in the first 10 minutes. We didn't manage to put any of those chances away, but you could tell early on that uh, we'd be testing Edinburgh um, through various channels, especially when he gets the ball. He's just a, just a key player. And and uh, I know Mr. DuPont is the old saying, he's, he's the best guy in the world. But but uh, Gibson Park um, just seemed to slot it back into to, to, to what he was doing before he got injured. And uh, it's just great. That's the first thing. Great to have him back. Um, as I said, in the first 10 minutes, sort of, Two things that stood out for me was just, um, I don't know if it was a bit of the rain or the wind, but Edinburgh is kicking from hand and and it, and it continued for the rest of the game. Um, just was a bit wild. And um, I thought Price and Thompson were guilty of some poor kicking from hand. And I know the Edinburgh coach touched on it after the game that, that Leinster won the kicking battle. Uh, we can probably touch on Prendergast on his kick and just he seems to find grass in behind all the time. And um, that can cause chaos and panic, even if you're trying to defend it, if it doesn't end up with a Leinster player. Where Edinburgh were the reverse, and they just kept in the first 10 minutes, given, oh, sort of easy territory by just some some wild kicking. And uh, we didn't manage to put that away. Um, there was also a sign that Edinburgh's line-outs was a little bit, a little bit, bit shaky earlier on. There was a few overthrows and we stole a few. Um, but yeah, eventually, you know, getting the first try of the game, it came actually call it against the run of play because it was sort of Edinburgh's first sortie into to our half. Uh, Thomas Clarkson, who had a fairly decent game overall, he was pinged for just a binding call on a scrum and um, Edinburgh decided to go down the go down the corner. Um, I think Leinster's defence and uh, Nienbar will look at this. I, I thought um, after initially, Edinburgh had scored a try uh, in the corner, but it was deemed marginal forward pass um, and it came back for advantage. We were giving away a pen advantage within a couple of seconds 
of the next penalty and of, of, of the of the previous penalty. And that really just gave Edinburgh a free ball. Uh, I thought we were quite passive in, in Edinburgh's pick and jam. And eventually Schumann got in to score the first try of the game. Um so yeah, I think Leinster would be disappointed with that. I, I I thought just looking at looking back at the game, our body positions on the line was very high. Um if you can imagine the the, the sumo wrestlers out in Tokyo, the way they get really low uh before they charge against their opposition um to try and get under them. Uh, Leinster, for whatever reason, it'll be interesting to hear what the coaches are reading because it seems to have changed. It seems a little bit higher on the on, on the on the try line. And um sort of comically Gary Ringrose went the wrong side of the post to try and tackle Schumann as he went the other side of the post. So, look, it was a disappointing score. Uh, it sort of was against run of play. And, um, but look, Edmore were happy with it. But in fairness, there was enough in that first 10, 15 minutes that Leinster were going to sort of come back into the game anyway. Um, like I touched on, just Edinburgh's kicking woes continued. Um, and they were losing that kicking battle against us. We created a pen advantage, I think, in the sort of um, halfway through the half. And um, I suppose the first signs of of uh, Blair, Tyler Blendall's sort of slightly different ta- attacking philosophy, I think when I you know, look, noticed it looking back on the game um, compared to, say, last year or the last couple of years, um, where a lot of players running short in the line and then players at the back. And that suited the team the way on, on, on the personnel we picked, you know, Tector as a, as a sort of uh, 12, who's he's obviously been uh, remanufactured to a 12 uh, instead of a 10. Um, but that sort of added playmaker outside Prendergast. So Prendergast was pulling the strings a lot with this, um, just his link play and keeping the moment, the, the sort of momentum going that, that Gibson Park brings. Um, so there's a lot of play, sort of you sort of dummy runners and you've played going out the back and several times and it's, you know, at pace as well as the other thing. And, and you know, it was simple handling and, and good execution and all the players knowing what, what roles they had in that sort of attack that sort of led to our first try. Um, but Prendicast, Ringrose and Tector were involved in it. And eventually Tommy O'Brien went into the corner sort of to to get our first five points in the game. Um, unfortunately, Tommy uh, looks like he's done his hamstring. Uh, he he was sitting on the bench as the camera panned to him and he bit of ice just at the back of his knee on top of his ha- the hamstring. So look, the guy can't catch a break. Um, I'm hoping it's not too too serious um, because I think just in discussion with the start of the season, we, we all sort of said that he's one player that really needs a run of games um, to see if we can get the best out of him. And uh, it's just, yeah, try. And uh, it looked, looked so innocuous as well. Um, I know chatting to David on his way back from Edinburgh, he was saying there was a lot of uh, the artificial burns on the, on the, on the, on the, on the team as we're getting, getting the plane back and the same plane back he was getting from and, um, you know, I know those sort of injuries uh, are more prevalent on those pitches. I know we have a 4G at and scaries as well. And and sometimes those sort of um, injuries can happen. So, yeah, look, hopefully Tommy can come back, um, you know, fairly, fairly quickly. And it's not, nothing too serious. Um, as I said, you know, mentioning Edinburgh's pro kicking again. I think it was uh, Jamie Ritchie who I thought was one of um, Edinburgh's best players in the night. Had played well. Uh, he kicked one out in the fall. I don't know what he was doing kicking the ball, but um, but it was it was some really good aggressive tackling, the sort of and line speed from Leinster to sort of create is is putting Edinburgh under pressure on those kicks. And um, he kicked one out in the fall. Uh, we had a nice scrum pen, I think, Clarkson sort of redeemed himself from the first one. Um, and then again another poor kick by I think it was Price who 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 who, who had a fairly indifferent game. Um, they were sort of himself and Johnson were sort of afraid to go long against. I suppose this shows the value of playing Jamie Osborne. They were afraid to go long all night against Jamie Osborne, uh, and they really shied away from him, uh, bringing him into an aerial battle. They obviously looked at the tape out in South Africa and thought we don't fancy going in the air against him. So I see what they were trying to do: go shorter and make it more contestable in in sort of heavier traffic. But just the execution was off all night, and Charlie Tector gathered a really good ball and. And and sort of turned and, and and found himself in open space and and put in a beautiful dummy against Price, and sort of if an easy enough jogging for you know guy in his first day on his on his full debut, um and it sort of capped off a really good half an hour for him, um you know I touched on how well he'd done in that sort of second receiver role, um but it was a soft try from Edinburgh but it, you know that kicking issue continued into the second half with them, um I think 
there's there's two phases in the game, just finishing off the half. There's two phases in the game, one in the second half, Kieran can touch in. But for me, uh, this was the first phase of the game where I think Leinster will look back and feel they they could have pushed on a bit more. Um, they had a lot of possession and a lot of sort of um, Edmore weren't really creating much. And uh, at the score being 12-7 at that time, I thought they might have pushed on a little bit more. And uh, But they just didn't, they weren't as sort of, the moves weren't coming off as as as, as good as before. And um, they didn't manage to push on. And it was Edinburgh, in fact, that scored a try, um, the third try. And it was it was uh, Duhan van der Merv, who's, who's, who had a, scored a great try. Um, but I thought Leinster, again, will be very unhappy with the defence of this one. But the annoying thing was, I think, again, Edinburgh had scrum advantage. Um, and when they were playing advantage, the next rook was very, very slow. And, and Price was slow getting the ball out. And um, what that should mean is it should give your defence plenty of time to reset. Um, and for Gary Ringrose, I know he's prone to doing it, but just busted out of the line, um, completely missed his man. He did. He, he rang the wrong side of him. So he did, you know, if you're going to run out of the line and, and put pressure on an on attack, you're trying to force them inside to heavier traffic. And he did neither. And it just meant a bit of an overlap. And there was some lovely handle by Edinburgh. Jamie Ritchie threw a nice pass, pass out the back. And, and Van der Merwe, when he's in those sort of one-on-one, especially when the defending player is trying to come across from the other side, he's a very hard man to stop. And he, and he sort of cut back back inside and, and scored a good try for Edinburgh. Um, you know, it was good handle. But Leinster will be annoyed for a few reasons. I think Ringrose was at fault. And I just, especially with the, the fact that the previous rook was so slow, it wasn't that it was super quick ball that created the try. Um, so I think you know, um, Ninbar will will have a look at that over, 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 over the week before we play the Dragons. And again, just finishing off again, Leinster a lot of pressure in the last five or six minutes of the game, of the half, and sort of failed to push on a bit. You know, I mean, we had chances, we had chances of three points, um, and our our pick and jam play that you know anyone looking at Leinster for the last five, six, seven years has always been a strong point, but I, I just think maybe with the combination of the latching rules, the latch rules, the law is slightly changing and, and the fear of getting held up. Um, we don't seem to be as exact around that area um, as previous years. And we sort of didn't really look like scoring from those pick and jams. And, and, and it gave Edinburgh a little bit of a boost going into halftime 12 all when we had chances maybe to, to go either 15, 12 up or, um, or, or, or maybe get another try. Because I think when Leinster went, um, you know, when you look at the first 40 minutes, when they went a couple of phases hard through strong carries with the likes of Jack Conan or somebody like that, and then they went wide using that sort of back play that seems to that Blend but Blendall seems to be to be imposing his little bit of style on, on how we attack. Um we got just rewards and we were able to really make heavy inroads into Edinburgh territory. Um but we didn't do that enough as we got closer, you know, within ten meters. We sort of resorted to more short carries and it just didn't pay off. So, yeah, good half, a um, couple of good tries and a couple of tries that um, Shaq Neenberg will be talking to the lads uh, tomorrow about, um, uh, especially, I think, you know, how soft we were around defending uh, Schumann's try. And then, obviously, I, I thought we were poor poor defence against, uh, Van, uh, not taking that away from Edinburgh, it was a good try with handling, but, you know, looking at it from our point of view, the, the, the handling itself or the defence itself wasn't great. Yeah, I think Leo said himself after the match that it was uh, kind of a mixed bag uh, in many ways. And the first half was a classic example. There was some good, some bad. It was interesting the way we were lining out. Um, like you say, um, the use of Tector at number mm. 12. I mean, we, um, I suppose we're thinking, you know, we, we wouldn't, we, we won't have Robbie Henshaw. We won't have uh, Jordy Barrett at this time of the season. So we do need someone to play 12. We lost another Charlie um, at 12 last season. So we needed someone to fill that role. We saw in preseason Tector and Harry Byrne. We, we we've had this discussion about who's going to play 10. We've got so many options. It's kind of a, it's kind of a kill two birds with one stone kind of thing to put those two at this position. Now we've done it before at this time of the season, sort of the, the but um, more of as a sort of a second five, eight kind of thing. But Tector, he's also, he's bulked up and he's doing a lot of the carrying as well. Do, 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 doing a lot of the heavy lifting, a lot of the roles we've been getting from 12 that, at, at that stage. And um, he, he got his reward for a try as well. It's almost, it's almost like a new signing for us in many ways. You could say mm. um, the way he's uh, he's moved into that, moved into that role. Um, another aspect was um, for our first, First try 
I'm just interested the way that we've kind of both Leinster and Ireland, we've made the um, goal line dropout a kind of a set piece in itself. Uh, mm. We did it so many times, uh, but basically wherever the goal line dropout goes, we'd get it to Kalen Doris and, uh, and he'd set up, he'd get us on the front foot. Um, I mean, almost every time. And we all know Jack Conan just as capable of, of filling that role. And um, that's basically what happened here. In fact, I think Ian Madigan was in the commentary box and he called it. He said when there was a goal line dropout, he said, this is a, this is a good opportunity for Leinster to, to, you know, to, to, to get back on the, get back on the front foot. And, uh, and sure enough, that's what happened. And we, you know, before we knew it, uh, Tommy O'Brien was, was going over in the corner and uh, I agree. They could have taken the three at the end as well. I mean, it's, we've, we've had this before over the years. It's Leinster kind of ethos, get the tries in, take the, take the taps, uh, go for the, but um, they, I think you were you guys were saying in the in the WhatsApp group at the time as it was happening that it's all very well to do that, but you have to have a have to be kind of adventurous to know what you're going to do. And it was just mm. simple pick and jams um, and stuff. And I, I don't think I think it was Gus McCarthy took the tap, didn't get very far with his first carry. Usually, you've seen Dan Sheehan practically get to uh, one meter away with his first carry, and you're going from there. So uh, we were kind of being pushed back um, from there. So it was it was close there at the end. The, the, the ta- just on that, I think the taps. You know, the playbook is, I won't say been held back, but that's just disrespectful of Edinburgh. But there was no nuance in, in the tap and goes. It was literally, yep. it was McCarthy trying to bust. And, uh, you know, he hasn't got the same physical size yet as, 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 as her, as, as you say, Sheehan. Um, and it, yeah, it just, it just looked like a basic enough mood. And the, 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 the rest of the carries after that, the pick and jams was, was basic enough as well. So yeah, and the longer you go, the the more phases you go, the the better. They're just more advantageous mm-hmm. for the defense. The more t- chance it is they're going to get over. What did you make of the first half, uh, Kieran? Yeah, well, on um on that tap and go at the end, I agree. It it should have been just take the three points. It was pretty much in front of the post. It was almost a guaranteed three points for Sam Prendergast. I I think the issue with it is. Like you said, it's kind of the Leinster ethos, just keep trying to score tries, build up the score. I, we all remember from days in the RDS, uh, which is obviously being renovated, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that like, uh, you know, Leinster, this this kind of time in the game would score two tries and then just before halftime would score two tries and then would empty the bench and then maybe just keep the scoreboard ticking over. But, you know, you can't necessarily do that every week. We're going to talk about the URC later. That's It's become much more competitive and as well, it's it's at the stage now where Leinster B isn't necessarily going to be running over all these teams. This wasn't exactly Leinster B. It had a few starting starting players, but we're not going to be running over teams easily. And um, yeah, just on what Tom said there, it wasn't it wasn't an inventive tap and go. I mean, there was no kind of um, just on that point there. If Dan Sheehan, if um, you know, if Dan Sheehan's on the pitch, he gets you up to the try line. We didn't have that kind of thing. It was just tap and go and keep running in a straight line into them and try barge your way over the try line as if you were kind of playing against the under 15s or something. Uh, that works if you're playing against a, a significantly smaller and amateur team. If this was Leinster playing a playing a practice match against like the academy side, maybe, but it's not gonna it's not gonna work in a match like this. So um, you know, you either have to have some kind of some kind of game plan there or just take the tree and we we thought look we we talked about it before there's there's a bitter taste in our mouth still from the European Cup final there's a there's kind of four bitter tastes in our mouth now at this stage from European Cup finals and you feel like if Leinster had to taken three points on two occasions in that first half you have Ross Byrne on the pitch he's a he's a good enough goal kicker if Leinster had to taken two penalty opportunities we probably win that game or without without necessarily being the better team. We pr- we probably become the European champions, and that it could have got away. From, you know, the t- the thing is, if we if we kick that three points and it goes in 15, 12 to us, then how did Edinburgh go into the dressing room? They probably go in thinking, right, we haven't been by far the worst team, but we're still three points down. We haven't there there hasn't been a mountain of space between the quality of the teams but we're still three points down and now we have to come back whereas instead it was Edinburgh hold Denster up which sometimes is as good as a try for motivating a side and it's a draw right Edinburgh have every chance of winning this game we'll see they actually scored the first try the second half so it nearly just handed the advantage to Edinburgh but um, yeah I think Lance just need to get a bit better at someone Someone, whether that's Gary Ringrose, Jack Cohn, and Sam Prendergast, someone needs to say, look, we're taking the three points here. Just get in at halftime. We'll be three points ahead without having played particularly well. 
we can worry about building the score down in the second half. So, uh, yeah, I think like we've said, mixed first half, but in fairness, um, probably no harm to have a few learning curves early in the season because maybe that's something Leinster have suffered with, having easy wins, coming into good form too early in the season. And we've seen with, you know, we the prime example is Munster two seasons ago. I think they weren't even in the playoff positions uh, at one point and then they go and win the whole tournament. Um, so, um, you know, you, you come into the form at the season the right time. If we can keep ticking things over for now, we can work on these things. But, uh, yeah, mixed first half, a bit disappointing at times, but we had enough quality to not let the game get away from us. Yeah, I mean, it was just a half where, you know, mistakes were being punished, basically. It was kind of like a sort of an early early season kind of uh, situation. But, uh, yeah, it was all to play for as the teams went in for the break, and the halftime score was Edinburgh 12, Leinster 12. <laughs> Well, before we return to the pod, first a little reminder of all the different places you'll find us in the Ruggers sphere. Myself and the lads are recording an extra chat for our YouTube channel about how the URC looks after three full seasons. And when it comes to online, we have actually moved our HQ to a new address. Just head to Linktree slash Harpen on Rugby to get access to all our latest content, as well as our presence on all the different social media platforms. Please be sure to comment, like, share and subscribe as needed. So with the scores level, it was uh, Sam Prendergast who took the second half restart, Kieran. Yeah, and um, you know you were hoping for a big response from Leinster, and unfortunately we kind of got a good punch in return. Uh, um, Russell for Edinburgh knocked down the ball from a high kick, and it uh, it ended up, uh, it, but we ended up coming back for Edinburgh penalty. Line out goes. Uh, Edinburgh had a line out that went straight to the back. This is about the forty second minute, so um, you know Edinburgh managed to wrestle back possession. Their line went straight to the back. They set them all and worryingly, they, they kind of just walked over the line. Like it was all a little bit easy. I think it was Cherry who touched down there in the end. Um, it was just far too easy. And it was kind of like, look, the first half was a wake up call. This was kind of a the second alarm you set to say, no, we're going to get out of bed now uh, because we, we really need to wake up now. And um, they, they kind of, it, it's a bit of a worry that maybe it's something. That hasn't been as good lately. One thing we talked about as good as the attack has been for Leinster in previous seasons. There was a time that you would have to knock on the door for about 15 minutes on the Leinster line. And if you do eventually score a try, you're pretty disheartened because Leinster are already ahead and it's taken you so long to just get five points. Uh, so um, it, it was a it was all a bit easy and that was Edinburgh's third try. But uh, then uh, from there, we, uh, we, did get, we did get one straight back and... Um, you know, you talk about you talk about more kind of inventive play. I suppose this was this was better. This was a better attack. It wasn't just through the motions. It was clever play, more expansive. Uh, Larmer's try it was a good pass in the build up by Sam Prendergast, and I think that's something we need from our tens. It's not just it's not just about kicking. It's kind of being the kind of playmaker. Um, I thought again we 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 kind of uh, we set up ourselves well here. And it was good. It was a good. Um, I, I won't call it sex and s because I think there's a problem with maybe comparing young fly halves to Johnny Sexton a bit too early, and I don't think that actually helps them. In fairness, uh, we saw that with Joey Carberry, where maybe we've maybe seen that with the likes of Harry Byrne, where maybe seeing with there with that Crowley just let them develop at their own time. But it was a good playmaker. Uh, Larmer's been a player who's really come back into form, and um, you know he he's really impressed in terms of. Uh, the end of the season with Leinster so I think he's going to be a big player for us and potentially Ireland uh, once again as we expected he would be a few seasons ago before injuries kind of derailed him Keane Healy came on for Michael Milner uh, so Keane Healy I think now it's the joint record appearances for Leinster uh, Leo Cullen was actually mentioning that excuse me uh, he had actually played with Keane Healy so that's how long he's been around now uh, just a word on Michael Milner and Tom Clarkson in particular I think it's a big season for those two because you look at Look, if 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 we're picking our if we're picking our front tree, we know it's going to be um we know it we know it's going to be Porter at, at loose head, Sheehan at hooker, and um Furlong at tight head. Uh, but um you know we're we know we know that's what it's going to be on the bench. It's going to be Kelleher, Keen Healy's there to kind of cover both positions, and Hooker. In fact, he just seems to cover everything now. It is, but um there is probably that little space there for either Milner. Or Clarkson, I think it's a good thing we signed Slimani. I think that's a really intelligent signing. 
just to, you know, he's an experienced player. Um, you know, he, he he didn't set the world alight when he came on, but he knows how to scrum and sometimes he just needs someone who can who can hunker down and scrum. One thing I was, I was talking to uh, Connor, who's often on the pod at the game against uh, Connor, the last game of the RDS, and one thing he made the point of the likes of, you know, players like Michael Bent for the years, they're kind of players who they kept things ticking over during the season when the big guys were away and then they come back on. Uh, and then when the big guys come on, they have a platform to build on because it's it's crucial that we have, uh, you know, it's, it's crucial that we keep just getting, it's crucial that we keep just getting wins in the meantime. So I think Slimani, he could be that kind of journeyman prop for us who, look, he's not going to, no one will probably be able to pick out an exact highlight of his time here. But on Milner and Clarkson, they're two young enough players. I think Milner's done well in his time. And I think in fairness to Clarkson, he's really been... Um, he, he did quite well in the first half, I thought, despite the scrum maybe not doing well. But I think um, at the same time, he um, yeah, yeah, he has that bit of room to go and maybe be that understudy for Furlong, especially if Healy's kind of covering loose head more so than tight head nowadays. So um, it's a big season for those two. And again, these kind of games, they're learning curves. They'll help you and, you know, they'll, they'll help you keep things ticking over. Uh, Leinster got another try then. And uh, it looked like things were kind of going to kick into gear now. Uh, Jefferson Gibson Park, who rightly got player of the match, um, yeah, he just spotted a gap like he does so well so often. Um, that was the bonus point then. He just, um, you know, it was a couple of phases. It was, everything was moving a bit quicker and a bit more varied, which was good. So obviously someone had a word at halftime. And Jefferson Gibson Park he just runs through the gap, touches down. Um, he makes it look easy, but it's really not. It's uh, it's just a very intelligent scrum half play, and then uh, a couple of minutes later, um, yeah, the uh, Leinster Leinster kicked the ball, Edinburgh take the ball into touch. Uh, Gibson Park tries to take it quick, which I like. He's trying to get things moving again, catch them off guard, don't let them reset. Um, but then um, it's brought back for five meter line out to Leinster. So McKee takes the throw to Ryan, and Conan gets over. Uh, I thought Conan had a fairly good game in fairness. And again, he's another player who, you know, he he's he's a very he's kind of maybe he maybe doesn't get the credit he always deserves, but he's a very important player. And you could argue McKee, it's an important season for him as well to maybe try put that. I don't think he's near certainly not Sheehan and definitely not Keller either, but it's a it's a tight chance for him to put a bit of pressure uh on that spot. If one of them is injured, then we need someone to cover that position. Um McKee throws to Ryan Conan just barges over. We go to the TMO. Um, the grounding was fairly clear, so I think what they I think they were checking something to do with blocking or something, but the try was good. Grounder gas convert, suddenly it's 19 to 31. One thing I noticed is in the huddle afterwards, Gibson Park was kind of leading the team. He was uh he was telling everyone to take a breath. You could see them doing their breathing exercise. I don't know, was there a bit of mindfulness in there too? Uh, but there was, uh, he was, you know, he was leading the team. I think that's good because we need players, even if they're not wearing the armband, we need players who can just lead the team and say, right, everyone just calm down now. We're two tries ahead. Game's not done yet, but let's just take a breath. Um, Ross Byrne got, came on then for Prendergast. I think, that, I think this is a really important kind of game for Prendergast because it's 60 minutes against the useful side. No one's going to remember this 60 minutes from Prendergast. We're not going to be talking about if we're, whether we whether we win the European Cup, the URC, the Irish Shield again, whether we don't win anything. No one's going to be talking about, remember that 20 minute, that 60 minutes from Prendergast against Edinburgh. But crucially, it'll do a lot for him because if he keeps getting errors in these games, it'll do him wonders. I think Ross Byrne, this is a good role for him because, look, we, we've talked about it and we don't like to be critical of players. Ross Byrne, I don't think he's a bad fly half by any means. He's just not what we need to win big to win big trophies. He's not what we need in the big games. He'll keep things ticking over for you, but it has to be for all the Prendergast. I would argue that as well, Prendergast, a point I'd make is when it comes to the when it comes to the November internationals, I think you should be in camp until that last one where it clashes with I think Leinster against Ulster. But when it comes to the Six Nations, I would argue he's better fit staying at Leinster. And the reason for that is, you know, it's going to be Jack Crowley starting for Ireland, and it's going to be Kieran Frawley on the bench. It's probably going to be a six-year split. Frawley covers a few positions. They're going to be the two names who start start and bench for fly half. In fact, you probably see Frawley come on on a different position and not even cover fly half. But I'd argue that Prendergast, he's not going to get game time in the Six Nations. And put him in the camp for a bit in November, but leave my home to be the main man for Leinster for those 
I think it's three games during the kind of um, Six Nations window. Leave him, leave him there to start those games. Leave him to get game time. That was more for him and ultimately benefits Ireland for having another option because, you know, someone like Ross Byrne, someone like, you know, I'm not going to name every fly half in Ireland, but uh, so, someone else who doesn't need the game time right now could fill that third fly half role. If there's a last-minute injury, they can step into the squad. That's probably a better option than going with Prendergast as just a kind of extra player in the squad who doesn't need to be there. So I'd argue, you know, he probably should get a bit of game time in November, make his debut. I sometimes think it's better for players to make an innocuous debut for Ireland rather than a rather than like a really high profile one. But um then and then over the summer obviously the line stores on. So it'll be it'll be a Ireland squad with less big names. You know, he can come on then and get a bit of game time against whoever we're playing in the summer. But uh, I think that I think that 60 minutes will do wonders for him. So um, Edinburgh go on the attack after that. And uh, Conan does well to get the turnover again. Really good recovery tackle from Larmer in that move, actually, because the worry was, is are Edinburgh going to hit straight back and suddenly it's a seven-point game and suddenly it's a bit of a worry. I think something, like I said, Leinster used to be really good at doing is making it, making it just really take as long as possible for the opposition to score tries. So uh, Larmer got back and made a good recovery. I think his defence has been really good lately. Uh, Kona got back to make the tackle. Edinburgh the line out. Uh, crucially now, just another period where Gibson Park goes off and McGrath comes on. So again, you're kind of changing your fly halves. It's not going to be as dynamic. But, uh, you know, Gibson Park can't play every minute of every game. Luke McGrath, I think he's the useful scrum half. I think he's good for keeping things sticking over. In the big games, if we're in a, if we're in a European Cup situation like last season and it's it's in the balance. It's a draw with five minutes to go. I think Gibson Park just stays on uh, unless he has an injury. But uh, in fairness to McGrath, I don't think he did anything particularly wrong when he came on. Uh, Edinburgh have a line out then. And um, it um, it's turned over again, cleared as far as uh, I think Graham uh, was the back that picked it up. Uh, ben Healy had come on at this stage and probably had a day to forget. I got the sense Ben Healy was trying to do a bit too much. Um, maybe that's because he... Maybe that maybe that's a bit of you, you know trying to put his mark on the game too much. You have to play the game in front of you. He knocked on the ball a few times. He rushed a couple of drop goal attempts, um, and there was still plenty of time. So um, you know he he had a bit of a game to forget. I think um, that he'd like to forget. But um, then uh, for um, Leinster Leinster finished the scoring for the day. Uh, but um, Edinburgh get another try again. The scrum causing a bit of problem. Wheeled pretty easily. Edinburgh line out. Edinburgh Mall again, which really causes problems. And I think maybe that's just um, the fact that it was maybe a bit of a mismatch of youth and experience, but it's something to work on. Uh, Van der Merwe touchdown. I think Van der Merwe is a really good player in terms of um, in terms of attack. Maybe leaves a bit to be desired in terms of uh, defence. So uh, it's not converted, crucially. So nine points in it with 11 to go. That's probably, like, as we'll see, Leinster, uh, Edinburgh ultimately get another try through Scott with the clock in red. So, um, you know, it was, it was only two points away from being a draw. I thought we defended well in that kind of last 10 minute period, because if Edinburgh get an early try here in this last 10 minutes, then basically, um, you know, you're thinking the game to the balance. Um, they went for a drop goal a few times, just didn't really work for them. Um, it was a bit of a stop start kind of last, last 30 minutes. Uh, Cullan came on for Penny at one stage. Um, kind of um yeah edinburgh just trying to get things going i think we started to defend well there but um you know you would have hoped later in the season that this game would have been kind of settled by then uh edinburgh won a couple of penalties i think our discipline at times wasn't great but um uh, eventually there was a um edinburgh had a scrum they went for a 50 22 it was failed so we came back to a leinster line out and then the try comes from um Leinster line out was uh, spilled. Edinburgh crossfield kick uh, goes out for another Leinster line out. And then this was when things got a bit messy because there was a yellow card for Ross Byrne. It was an interesting one because he clearly went for the ball. I mean, it was a fair contest, but the problem was he left his hands kind of dangling over the Edinburgh's player's face. And, um, you know, it, it was probably one of those, it was probably more down to carelessness than intent. Uh, I don't disagree with the yellow card decision because I think, you know, you have to be aware of your own body. He he had missed the ball at that stage and he took out the player. So, you know, probably and, and that could have been a that could have been an injury. But uh, eventually then when um, Edinburgh with a penalty off that and um, 
uh, the Edinburgh scrum half found a good gap. He uh, fed in there, number 23, came on as a sub. And um, yeah, that was that. So two bonus points for Edinburgh. I think I'd be happy with that. I think he had offered Edinburgh two bonus points to start the game. One thing as well i just say is we didn't really match the ref calls as well. I don't think the ref had a good game we did for either side. I don't think it's necessarily, there certainly wasn't any Leinster bias, but um, something we maybe have to get a bit smarter at is two things really. Take the points, just build score before worrying about scoring fancy tries and attacks, and as well playing a bit more to the ref and just thinking like, right, the ref's not calling this to break down, the ref's doing the, letting this happen at the breakdown. So that's how we're going to play. Uh, so yeah, look, good five points. Uh, Tom will take through his his highlights of the uh, game. Milner was on crutches, which is a bit of a concern. So hopefully, just a precaution there. I think Sam Prendergast as well seemed to get a bit of a bang. But um, yeah, look, good five points to start the season. Bench was a bit mixed. Don't think they really had a great impact, and that's a bit of a worry. But again, look, it was a chop and change team. Some experience, some youth. It was never. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't a rout by any means. But um. You know, five points in September in, in a in a rainy but not rainy day in Edinburgh. Sometimes that's just what you need to get the season going. Yeah, I mean, um, the thing about Gibson Park is that um, you know we, we talk about him a lot, and it's hard not to compare him to Dupont. Um, in you know when, when you're when you're talking about the world's best scrum half, but just just to talk about him in particular. I mean, the thing about him is is that you can. It's not. It's rare in in rugby, especially that you can actually pick one player and say that that one player is is could be the difference almost between winning and losing of a game or at least the the margin of victory of a game that 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 one person can have so much impact and you see you can see it here uh this is a classic example and you you even ask yourself like uh, if he'd been available in South Africa, could that have gone differently? You know, that's that's the kind of because he's 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 such he's, he's dynamic. He keeps the t- tempo going. He knows he makes the right decisions. He and uh, he he inspires the rest of the team as well. He links the play well between the forwards and the backs, which is what the scrum half is there supposed to do. But um, it's a great performance, and and they they actually wore, they actually named him out of the match after just seventy three minutes, which is really early. But it's like, listen, we all know it. We're going to name it now, and 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 that's it. You know. Uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's it's great to have him back. We're surprised to see his name in the team sheet. the The injury report suggests that he might not he might not be available. But listen, well, you know, we'll take it. Um, on Leinster's defense, yeah, we did we we were making mistakes. It, it, you know, we were letting Edinburgh back into it. On the positive side, two Edinburgh the, the first two Edinburgh tries in this half. Um, I remember there was a football manager years ago who came up with this. He made up this word bounce back ability. And um, I think in terms of our defense, if you look after that first try they got in the second half, um, we chased the restart. And before you yeah. knew it, we were on top of them. Larmer got to the restart um, there. We, we, we forced the knock on. And before you know it, we were, we were, we scored within a couple of minutes. Now Leinster have been known for that during the year, over the years for that um, conceding the score and coming straight back and doing it. But, you know, we're still doing it. And uh, after the, the Vander Merva try later on, the second Vander Merva try, um, there was a, there was a key period from 70 i think it was 70 to 73 minutes where they were attacking in our half but we just kept the line speed and pressing and pressing and pressing i think that's when um healy tried his drop go he tried yeah. to drop go we blocked it down but we kept pressing and then before we knew it um uh, we had a scrum outside their 22 that's how that's that's the kind of pressure we were putting on at the really crucial times but i, th- um, I think it was alan pardew yeah, that's it. <laughs> My memory is telling me it's Alan Bridge. Yeah, you know, yeah. Bounce, bounce back ability. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a, that, that 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 that's going back a bit. All right. Um, but um, listen, that was impressive as well. But for Edinburgh said, I think we were kind of lucky the way their halfbacks turned out. I did. Tom touched on how uh, Price didn't have a good uh, first half kicking wise, and then towards the end, you were saying how um, uh, yeah. uh, Ben Healy wasn't doing great. Now, maybe if they had played with uh, Velikos and Thompson, because Velikot was very, was very energetic and he got, he, he made that try out of nothing right at the very end. And uh, he, he really impressed um, in the second half. So maybe if they'd had that, that, that halfback combination earlier on, things might've been different, but say, listen, you know, we'll take it. Um, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a good result in the end. What, what did you think, Tom? Yeah, I think, look, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the big part, you know, I said halfway through the Monster uh, Connacht game that uh, I was going to focus on the on the attack and the positivity of the attack uh, and rather a uh, new season and all that rather than concentrate on defence because the defence in that game was uh, was wide open. And I think concentrating on the positives here, look, 
we went to Glasgow in the first game of last season and shipped 43 points and it was seven or eight tries with a fairly similar sort of team to the team that played. Maybe there was one or two less international class players like the likes of Ringrose and, and James Ryan, but it was pretty much a similar sort of a team. Um, sort of mixed bag of youth and experience and debuts and stuff like that and got, got sort of well pasted by 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 Glasgow. We looked at we looked at a little bit all at sea and in our in the defence. Uh so look, to get five points on the road and, and get get that win, um that's that's the main positive. Um and that's that's it with the with the with the South Africa tour coming up with the Irish the, the younger Irish guys, we're gonna lose some players. So I think getting that game and then doing the same next week, hopefully against the Dragons next uh, next weekend is 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 important to back that up. So yeah, that's that's really the main thing and there's lots to work on. Uh, you've both you have touched on a lot of things that positive I thought I thought Sam Prendergast had a very good game. I thought he pulled the strings. I think there's early signs of Blandell's type of attack. It's definitely different from um from uh Andrew Goodman's style um the way we've we sort of have players coming short and then pulling it out the back. Um uh, a, a series of those and, and sort of getting getting wide and drawn in players. So I think I like this. I like what I see so far on on the bits of attack that we've done. Uh, but it is early doors. Uh, I thought James Ryan had a good game. I thought you know he did the meeting, the meat and bone sort of thing. You know he, he got a good um, mall turnover at one stage, even though there was a little bit of confusion with the referee, uh, who I thought didn't have a good great game. But look, that was for both teams, so it, it was inconsequential. Uh, I think the Tector thing worked well, and it'd be interesting to see how that develops. Hopefully, get more chances. Yeah, I we we mentioned Conan's carrying, sort of. Um, he, he has less nuance than Doris on the old footwork, but he he definitely makes the same sort of impact. You know what I mean? So his his carrying and and, and ball carrying was 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 huge, and on trying to get that early platform before we could go to that new attack. Um, other little things I'd say, Lencers will be disappointed with their defense. Obviously, you know, Edinburgh had thirty. Five, I think, percent possession the whole or territory, twenty five percent territory the whole game. It's let's go five tries, um, and as we've already touched on, the three of us touched on some of them were softish, and um, definitely that's something we can work on. So look, I'm sure Neen Bar will have to earn his crust about, uh, but with that, um, I think probably what what the person mentioned would be, you know, I think the reason we won the game was we 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 won the kicking game and that gave us the territory, um, I. I think the three of us have mentioned that. So I think um, Edinburgh's halfbacks had a sort of mixed mixed day, as we've touched on, where I think our kicking game to give us that territory uh, gave us the win in the end. And that's that, that was one area we were better than been better than Edinburgh. Uh, it's interesting looking at the start of the season. Um, uh, you know, if, if I, I, given the conditions it was in Edinburgh, if you watch this game 10 or 15, 15 years ago, you would be surprised if it probably ends something like 12 6 to Leinster. So rugby has changed, and you know that's some, that's a, a broad, that's a broader discussion. And um, games like this don't definitely end up thirty three, thirty one on a wet evening in Edinburgh. Um, so the, the the new laws about you know, trying to make the the game, the game more open seems to be paying off for that. Anyway, maybe at the expense of this defence. Uh, lastly, I'll probably touch on Slamani. Um, Kieran Wright, I think, is a very good sign for Leinster to make a clever signing. Um, I thought he did well enough. I thought he probably didn't get the change that he might have deserved off the referee. Um, I think Keane was probably a little bit. Healy was a little bit more more on the pressure on his side. Um, I yeah, there's a few people saying he looked he looked wrecked. I don't know if it was the pace of the game. Uh, I would be surprised with that. I'm looking at the stats last year, he played 32 games for Claremont in the season. Started 25 of them. You know that tells me there's a guy who's got some sort of an engine at tight head. Um, Maybe he's had a few too many Leo Bordock since he came to Dublin. <laughs> he's just settling in, so I wouldn't be too quick to to say he's 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 blown out of his arse with <clears throat> ten minutes to go. I think any any tight head prop that plays, <clears throat> excuse me, thirty two games in a season in in the top fourteen, and I think Clermont were in the Challenge Cup, it's fair going. Um, you know, and he would probably had fifty minutes starting and and maybe half an hour coming off the bench in the seven where he come off the bench, so. Yeah, it'll be he is key, as Kieran has said. Um, you know, this this season, the uh, sort of backup Clarks and then and some of the younger props. So yeah, all in all a good day. Look, a win is a win and we move on. Yeah, indeed. Loads to talk loads to talk about, um, but uh, loads loads to work on. But as we say, five points on the road to start a season can't be sneezed at. And as we say, the final score was Edinburgh thirty one, Leinster thirty three. <laughs> Well, 
elsewhere in the URC, with the Curry Cup final, meaning the South African Cubs had an extra week off, we were left with just the six matches. And as it turned out, all of them had a score in the closing stages, which affected the split of the match points. In the first interpro of the season, Munster edged out Connett thanks to a Shane Daly try. While up at the Kingspan, it was Dave Shanahan going over with the cock in the red to edge out the reigning champions, Glasgow. Before that, Zebra struck late to nick a losing bonus point in Cardiff. Logan Yendo crossed for the Dragons, served a shield win over the Ospreys, and it was Onisi Ratave who snatched a late try to equalize for Benetton at home to the Scarlets, although Umaga could have won it with the conversion, all of which leaves Cardiff, Munster, and Leinster with maximum points after the first weekend. Now, as Leo Cullen's post-match reaction following the victory in the Scottish capital, it, uh, it went something like this, quote, it was a little bit of a mixed bag. Edinburgh overpowered us at the start when we were probably a bit second to the punch. But as the game wore on, we looked okay and put a lot of pressure on them from a defensive point of view. We had some young guys in there, so it was a great experience for them, end quote. All of which brings us to our final thoughts from the match, starting with Tom. Yeah, just short and sweet. As I said, I think, you know, you look at last 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 year's match, you know, getting hockeyed over in Glasgow. Um, I think uh, it was, you know, to win with win with a bonus point and you have three full debuts, debutants playing um, and you get a couple of the likes of Gibbs Park coming back from injury all in all and what he gives all in all it's 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 a really good start to the league and at the end of the day um, as a supporter I've learned to enjoy these games more, You sometimes you keep thinking about towards the end of the season but you sort of just have to stop and smell the roses they say and just watch the game for the 80 minutes for what it is and just enjoy it um, because a lot of them become, can become footnotes in a season when you review at the end of the year going, what what trophy did we win or not win? So, look, you just have to go back and join, join rugby and 33-31 win over in Edinburgh against a fairly strong Edinburgh team. A lot of Scottish internationals in that team. I know they had an indifferent season last year, but um, there's still a lot of talent there. And look, they were I'm sure they were desperate to get the win. I know that's stating the bloody obvious, but because they're going to South Africa next. So they knew they needed to get something on the board. And uh, now I know they ended up getting a, a losing bonus point and a try bonus point, which is which 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 is a little bit of a consolation. But you know there could be tr- three wins, sorry, three losses from three after three weeks, and and then all of a sudden you're looking up the table. So look, Edinburgh it was a difficult start for us considering the players that we 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 either couldn't play or didn't pick, um, and then for 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 the debutants, you know, I know including Slimani, who who I thought I, I you know did well. Uh, as I said, and then you have you know Conor Artiernik, who 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 had a bad game, um, alongside Ryan, uh, Charlie Tector had a great game, and uh, yeah, no, it was all in all, it was it was a great win, and uh, I'm just more you know from my point of view, just about enjoying the win and and seeing how that Tyler Blandall attack develops over the next few weeks, and you know look at this look at the Dragons game, and then onwards towards Munster and see how it develops, um, you know that'll be that'll be the most interesting thing because last year. Uh, I suppose the one accusation or maybe the last 18 months was Leinster slightly went away from their DNA, maybe a little bit harsh on attack. Um, but I've seen signs of it sort of sort of coming back, you know, that sort of Lancaster style of attack. Um, there, was, there, was, there was some signs of that for last night. So, yeah, that's what I'd be looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. And like like we said, we, we we've talked a lot about how long last season was. Well, I mean, this season is pretty much pretty much the same. Um uh, with the Lions tour at the end of it and stuff. So there's a long way to go. And pretty sure mm. when it comes to when it comes to next uh, April and May, we won't be talking about uh the, the September win in, in Edinburgh. But uh, like you say, five points uh is, is definitely is definitely a good way to start the season. Uh Kieran. Yeah, I think look like I said, five points. I mean, there's no, there's no complaints there. If we, if we had a loss or drawn the game, then um, that would. Uh, I, I think sometimes to start the season, you just need a win. You don't need to play particularly well. And in fact, as I, as I said there, you know, I think, I think we're learning in the URC. It's important to hit, hit form at the right time. Uh, we won the game without having to, without having to play really, really well. But we still had to. I suppose Edinburgh Edinburgh put it up to us, and that's a good thing. If we had to start the, the season with just an easy win that was routine, nothing to work on, that that probably would have been worse than this kind of more cagey win. I look at in in the latter stage, it wasn't really in doubt because it was nine min, nine points in it. But um, you know, Edinburgh did put it up to us. So I'd say, um, yeah, look, five points, happy enough. Good to get game time for some of the younger players as well. Excuse me. Um, but um, crucially, I think um, 
you know, it's all about keeping things ticking over and trying to get the likes of Sam Prendergast, Charlie Tector, as much game time as possible, trying to keep players fit. Because then we need to really hit form after it. Like, we need to be in a good position coming into the South Africa tour after the Six Nations. Then, crucially, we need to actually get something out of the South Africa tour because that's been that we saw that was a big issue last season. If if we had to pick up one losing bonus point there in one of those games, we might have finished ahead of Bulls. That means we don't have to travel down. In fact, they have to travel up to us. That makes us favourites for the game. That means that we could be in a URC final in Dublin uh, against Glasgow. So, um, you know, that's that's the real time to come into form. We have to be, we'll have to be much better for even Munster in a few weeks' time. Have to be much better over the December into Bros and the Champions Cup in December and January. But um, you know, it's only September, so sometimes it's just about getting the win. They're not all going to be memorable. You know, you win by 50 points. They're not all going to be record wins. I remember, I think, uh, you know, I think we were a bit spoiled in, in our in times at the RDS during um, during the kind of early stage, during some of the Leo Cullen era and certainly the uh, Joe Schmidt era in the sense that we'd often get, um, you know, we'd often get fairly routine 50 points to 10 wins or something like that. We'd win games by 40 points to 30. Sometimes you need to win a game a bit ugly. Two things I'd say is, like I said before, take the points if they're on offer sometimes, especially clocks in red. You're not going to get the ball back for the half. Take the three points and that edges you into the lead. If we had to do that in the European Cup final, we might be European Cup champions. Uh, and as well, just try to read the game, regardless of whether the ref is refing the game badly or in a well or how they're refing the game. Just try to play a bit more to the way they're refing the game. But uh, yeah, look, good win, good bit of game time for different players. So um, yeah, look, no complaints. And hopefully uh, another good performance and another good result against Dragons next week. You know, listen, we're going to leave it there. Uh, many thanks again to Tom and Kieran for joining us. It was a great chat. And I uh, hope to have you both on again soon. Thanks, lads. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Just... As for our next batch of Harpen, keep an eye on our YouTube channel during the week for our bonus chat about the URC and also our weekly video newsletter, the 80 plus column. After that, we'll be turning our attention to our first home match of the season against the Dragons. So be sure to follow us on any or all of our social media platforms, which you'll find at Linktree slash Harpen on Rugby. In the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Slon.